Hey guys, and welcome to the brand new Skoda L-Rock. So I was very lucky to go to the launch, the world premiere of this in Prague, in Czechia a few weeks ago, but that was more like a party, a premiere done at night with like 350 journalists and only like five or six cars. So that video, I wasn't very satisfied with what I was showing you, but yeah, I made a video because, because I, I was there. But luckily we now have this car on Norwegian soil. So I thought why not make another video going through this car more thoroughly and having a little bit more time to make this video. So yeah guys, give this video a thumbs up and I hope you enjoy the new Skoda Elrock. Safety starts with the tire. And that's why I can highly recommend the new studless winter tire from Continental Viking Contact 8, which is already a test winner. Remember guys, the tire is the only thing keeping your car on the road and that's why it is so important to have the best possible tire. And that's why I can highly recommend the best, which is this new Viking Contact 8 from Continental. You can also win a set of these Continental Viking Contact 8 studless winter tires if you go to the link in the description box down below and you fill out the form. So a huge thanks to Continental for sponsoring this video and also for making the Viking Contact 8, making our roads safer. So what's interesting about this Skoda Elrock is that size-wise it's right in between the Volkswagen ID3 and Volkswagen ID4. And at the launch in Prague a few weeks ago, we were kind of joking and calling this the Skoda ID 3.5 because yeah, that is basically what it is. And for that joke to really hit, you have to know that this is built on the same platform as those cars. So Volkswagen Group's MEB platform. So this is available with a whole bunch of battery packs. The same battery packs you will find with the ID3, but this is bigger. You have the same wheelbase as the ID3 and the ID4. Those two cars have the same wheelbase, but this is longer than the ID3. And also you can have this with all wheel drive, which you can't have with the ID3. So I think this is a very, very interesting vehicle. And I think because of that, and because it starts from 300,000 kroners here in Norway, or 33,000 euros in Europe for the cheapest version, I think this may just become the best selling electric car in Europe in the next few years, because you can have a cheap one with rear wheel drive if you just, if you just want an electric car, but you can also have it with the big battery pack and all wheel drive. So that's why I think this is a very interesting car that's gonna appeal to a lot of people in a wide price range. So this LROC carries Skoda's brand new design language called Modern Solid. So we don't have the typical Skoda grill anymore that is now replaced by this straight line, this panel here, which looks very clean. This is called Tech Tech. So you have all of the radar sensors, you have the cameras, and stuff like that hidden behind that panel. That's why they call it Tech Tech. And you also have this brand new DRL light signature that I think looks very modern and very fresh. I mean, Skodas have been attractive enough, but I think this elevates it to the next level. And I really like this front end design. And then separated from the DRLs, we have the headlights. So like on the new Audi Q6 Citron and the Porsche Macan, the DRLs and the headlights are separated. And I think it kind of, if you squint a little bit, and you're in a good mood, it looks like a baby Macan. But yeah, I, I actually really like the design. I think it looks really clean, especially in this white color. And then instead of the Skoda logo, you have now Skoda lettering. You also have that on the steering wheel and on the rear. There are only the wheels that have the typical Skoda logo. So I really like this new front end design. This here is a high spec trim. So you have, you know, silver, this, this silver splitter in front. You also have, you know, this, this, this nice grill. But I think overall it is a very attractive design and let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I wanna ask you guys a small favor that is completely free for you and that is subscribing to the channel. You may not care about subscribers and I really don't care about subscribers, but the manufacturers and the brands do. So when I try to get early access to a car, they look at my subscriber count, they look at my view count. View count is very good, but subscribers is a little bit lacking for where I wanna be to you know, be invited to more events. So 
I want to ask you guys to subscribe to the channel and if we can get to 50,000 subscribers before the end of October, I want to plan a big trip somewhere in Europe, somewhere around the world with an awesome electric car and I want you guys to choose where. So again, thank you so much for watching, thank you so much for commenting and liking and also subscribing. From this angle, you can see that this car is actually quite a bit shorter than the Skoda Enyaq. It has very short rear overhangs and also short front overhangs. But in the middle, like from the A pillar to the C pillar, it kind of looks like an Enyaq. You have this piece of trim here, which is also the same as you find on an Enyaq. And you have these, this cladding here that kicks up here right above the wheel. Maybe not the most exciting angle of this car, but I think these creases, you know, this line here is just very elegant. And I also like these door handles, very chunky and very solid. Overall, maybe not the most exciting angle, but it's not unattractive from this angle. Where the new front looks very modern and aggressive, the rear is more traditional Skoda. It has the same taillight designs as with the Enyaq and the old Kodiak. A very attractive, but maybe a little bit boring and conservative design. And as you guys can see here, we have the Skoda lettering and not the Skoda logo. This angle may be the most boring angle of the car, but I think the lower part of the bumper just widens it a bit and I really like how that looks. I think it looks sporty and elegant. I also do like these rare light designs. I think it's fine, you know, it's not the most exciting as I said, but I think it looks very elegant and timeless from the rear and I'm pretty sure this angle is going to age very well. And talking about the rear, we have the trunk which is 470 liters. 110 liters less than in the Enyaq, but it's only about 50 liters less than what you find in the Audi Q6 e-tron. There are parts of the outside, the exterior of this, that really reminds me of the Skoda Enyaq, like the rear and the, some of the parts in, in profile, like between the A and the C pillar. But in here, it not only reminds of a Skoda Enyaq, I think it is basically identical, except for this piece of plastic in this car being matte black instead of glossy black. Maybe the trim here is a little bit different, but the steering wheel is basically the same, except for this having Skoda lettering instead of the Skoda logo. The screen in front of the driver is the same. This, maybe it's a little bit smaller. I think this is 13 inches and it is 15 inches in the Enyaq, but the doors are the same, this trim here is the same, the dashboard design is the same, the seats are the same, and also it looks like the rear seats are the same. And that is not a bad thing, that is not a bad thing because the Enyaq has one of the nicest interior in this class of vehicle. And when it comes to the MEB siblings like the ID4 and the Q4 e-tron, I think the Enyaq ties to Q4 e-tron for having the nicest and highest quality interior. And what's really nice about this interior and in the Enyaq is that you have a lot of physical controls. So you have stocks, you have a cruise control stock here. You have physical buttons. You also have a, an array of buttons there. You have a gear selector down here, handbrake. You also have four window switches. You have mirror switches. It's just a really nice place to be. You have this armrest here, which is adjustable. You have nice practicality underneath here in the center. You also have large door bins. Overall, a very roomy and spacious car. And also, like, headroom is massive. I could probably adjust the seat a little bit higher, getting more of that commanding SUV driving position. But overall, an impressive interior at this price point. I mean, when Volkswagen Group first came out with the ID3, at that price point, the interior was so cheap and nasty, they improved that with the facelift. But this interior from just above 30,000 euros, I think that is impressive. This car specifically, though it's a high spec with, with leather seats, it has ventilated seats, so this has all the bells and whistles, but you're still gonna get the same dashboard design, you're gonna st still get the same layout if you go for the entry level version. And for that, that is impressive. The door handles on the exterior do feel really nice. So this seat is set to my driving position. I'm about five foot 11 or 180 centimeters sitting behind myself. This is really impressive. There is a lot of room. I'm gonna keep this door open because there's no panel roof in this car and we're indoors. So the lighting is pretty poor. 
But look at this, look at this knee room sitting behind myself and also headroom, very, very generous. Also a lot of room for my feet. This is a very spacious rear cabin. Of course, the rear doors have cheap plastics. That is to be expected. You had a nice plastics up front, but in the rear, that's where they're gonna price cut or cost cut. But this still has, has a three zone climate with heated rear seats. You have door pockets here. This feels nice, this material, the seats feel nice. You, you sit uh, highs up off the floor, so you don't feel like you're, you're sitting down on the floor. You have nice under thigh support. And even in the middle here, even this is comfortable. Look at this. I was recently in Germany looking at the new Macan EV. This has more room in the middle seat that feels more spacious than that car. And that is very impressive. So there we go, guys. That was my complete tour and review of this new Skoda Elrock on the exterior and on the interior. And I think for this price point, this is a very impressive package. If it's just as good to drive as a Volkswagen ID3, this is going to be a winner. That car is quiet, that car is comfortable, but having that small of a vehicle and having an entry level price point that low, but still having a lot of practicality and having this interior with this functionality with the physical buttons, this is a great car. I can't see why I'm not gonna love this once I get to drive it because the Skoda Enyaq is already one of the very few family electric SUVs that I recommend to people looking for a car like this. And this is cheaper, it's smaller, and it seems just as good. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.